James comes out of the pack. James on the drive, goes inside, stop, shot, lock, gets it back. It's over. It's over. Denver makes history. The Nuggets are going to the NBA Finals for the first time in franchise history. What's up? Mike here. And last night, LeBron James and the Lakers season ended. But I would say overall, despite looking at this sweep, I mean, I think we can all agree that the Lakers would have taken a Western Conference Finals appearance. Now, the fact that they got swept by the Nuggets, I feel like getting swept is what makes this feel like they got smacked into a Oblivion, and it feels like more like a first round loss. But in reality, the Lakers were one of the top four teams at the end of the day in basketball this season. So that means that, yes, we have LeBron James. Let's pull those up. LeBron James says he will consider retirement. Why is he threatening retirement? I like this from Kevin O'Connor instead. Why is he threatening? By the way, I hope you are having an incredible day to finish off the structure of what you are going to be watching in today's video. We are going to be talking about LeBron and his future. So we are going to be talking about trades. I think that the Lakers could realistically make we're going to be going to the ESPN trade machine for instance we're going to be getting Kyrie Irving on the Los Angeles Lakers then we're going to go to whatifsports.com where we're going to be able to re-sim the Denver Nuggets series with the Lakers new roster that we'll have so we'll be able to put Kyrie Irving on the Lakers and see if they'd be able to take down the Nuggets with Kyrie first though we are back to LeBron is actually weighing retirement yeah I suffered foot injuries so he'd be walking away from 96 million dollars LeBron might retire for one year so this is is the one that you're like, I think maybe. If we're going right now in our face conspiracy, it's that LeBron James is setting up to retire for one year, take a break, take a season to relax, and then come back for a strong run with Luca. Bronny James, of course. He was asked if he believed a summer of rehab could get him back to the player he was prior to his foot injury. He said, yeah, because I'm still better than 90% of the NBA, maybe 95. I think you're better than that, Bron. You might be underselling yourself wildly. Just averaged 27.8 points, 9.5 rebounds and 10 assists per game in the Western Conference Finals. I know you got swept. LeBron just isn't used to getting swept, I feel like, me. LeBron is publicly negotiating again. So essentially, yeah, get me Kyrie, which we're doing. We're about to do that. So we like that. We're jumping in there in a second. LeBron demands a trade to the Warriors. The Kevin Durant route? Say it ain't so. I mean, he took down the Warriors though. So what's that? You like conquered the team and then you take pity on them and join them? We do know LeBron James along with the Warriors cast would be one of the most incredible things to watch on television. But do we want that? Do we want LeBron on every team in NBA history? By the way, if you are enjoying this video, we are on the grind to 10,000 subscribers. It would be awesome again if you are liking the video. If you subscribe and turn on post notifications, that way you don't miss the next video. Also, we just so happen to be doing a huge giveaway right now. Let's roll that tape. To celebrate the launch of Coors Light, we are giving away a VIP experience to game four of the NBA Finals. Plane tickets, a room, incredible seats. It is all included for game four of the NBA Finals for one lucky person who is subscribed to Coors Light. The winner will be picked on June 1st. All you have to do to enter is subscribe and turn on post notifications for Coors Light. Good luck. I cannot wait to pick the winner. This is going to be incredible. So to enter a giveaway to win tickets to game four of the NBA Finals, all you have to do right now is subscribe, turn on post notifications. Good luck, and now back to the video. Like, let's just leave that rivalry sacred to me. LeBron, keep these guys your rivals. So here we are at the part in the video where the pressure amps up for me because the comments have come at me. We wanna make sure, as we pull up the ESPN trade machine, we're gonna be looking at realistic trade packages. Now, it's early in the summer, it's May. It's not even June. What I mean by that is that the trade rumors are about to ramp up. It's about to be a very exciting time. I think we can all, I'll admit that the what if fantasy aspect when our teams are struggling can carry us through the offseason at times. We are going to be pulling up the Los Angeles Lakers, of course, here. We are going to be watching as D'Angelo goes away, Mo goes away, and Kyrie goes away. Okay. So we love to use the ESPN trade machine when we can, but when we're in this situation, we, we just can't. Luckily, according to the Brian Windhorst reports here, which remember, Brian Windhorst and LeBron, let's go into this, if you didn't know this. So Brian Windhorst is supposed to be the absolute insider on LeBron James knowledge. Take that for what you want, but that could carry weight with the whole Kyrie stuff, because look, Windhorst was a beat writer in Cleveland when the Cavaliers selected James first overall in 2003 draft and appeared to cultivate a close relationship with him. They also attended the same high school. So so but then he revealed the truth. All good things come to an end. In years past, I had messaged him, but we both kind of moved on. Whew. Did not see this ride coming. A breakup and out of nowhere. But 
Many attribute essentially Brian Windhorst's career to his original personal relationship with LeBron. Let's take his words with a grain of salt, but the Mavericks have more chips on the table. They're still holding what they invested to get, of course, Kyrie. Kyrie says, hey, I'm going to the Lakers and I'll go. I think if the Mavericks backs are put up against the wall, they would probably have to cooperate. We have that D'Angelo Russell contract going over in a sign and trade. And then everyone is just linking Mo Bamba. That seems to be the big piece that people want that the Lakers are able to give up. However, in that situation, the Mavericks get ruined, right? They get, it's horrible. I also wanna say, I just moved. We're gonna set this place up so great. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be like back in the day vibes where there's a basketball hoop to shoot on. Don't have it right now. Instead, I got, I got nothing. What we have, Pelicans, right to swap picks, owned by Pelicans, owned, but they have, the Lakers have all of these picks all at the end, okay? Thank you, Laker Nation. At the end of the day, this would not be a good trade for the Dallas Mavericks. Let's be clear. What this would be would be Kyrie Irving saying, despite his handshake deal, he was going back on everything and he was demanding a trade to the Los Angeles Lakers. So in this world, if you're new to this channel, if you're new to these kind of videos, I am taking the current Los Angeles Lakers right here and we are going to be removing the guys that we'd be trading. So we're giving up Rui and we end up replacing with this year's version of Kyrie Irving. And so now we are able to take the dead Denver Nuggets from this year. And we are going to be able to re-sim the playoffs. Generate play-by-play, play, please, sir. We got game one. Here we go. Jumping right into it. So this is how we're going. We got a play-by-play. Play. We're going to have a box score to look at. And as we can see, the Kyrie Lakers crushing. Seven for 17. Importantly, though, I mean, destroyed them. Wow. That's 1-0. 1-0 Lakers, already they've taken one. And as we're going through these games, just like I used to in the 2K days, I'm gonna take this time to just talk about my thoughts on the series overall. Because overall, I went into this series really questioning if Nikola Jokic was going to be playing at that level of a Larry Bird type. Someone who was undoubtedly the best player on the court, who was just playing at a historic level above everyone else. And I've gotta say, in real life, it's not happening right here because we have a 2-0 Lakers with Kyrie lead. LeBron carrying though, still 37, 10, and seven. Anyway, in real life, I wouldn't say Jokic was any tier above LeBron James. LeBron went down fighting like an absolute. I accidentally simmed the Nuggets again away. We are supposed to be following playoff rules here. This does not count. Get it out of here. Kyrie, they, they would have won though. Jokic taking a quick glance at his overall stats. I really feel like right here, rebounding okay we got 27.8 points 14.5 rebounds 11.8 assists i just want to stop talking about the triple doubles really because i understand the triple doubles but it's more than a triple double right we need a stronger word for the serbian bear dominant triple doubles that Nikola Jokic is putting up. And what I feel like is getting severely underappreciated as we go through game three here is Nikola Jokic's unbreakable toughness down there. As an NBA center, and this is a close one actually, but as an NBA center, it's the playoffs. You better be ready to be grabbing 20 rebounds. If we're talking about historic centers, they physically overpower people. We just watched, unfortunately, as Carl Anthony Towns was not able to do so. Tie game, game three. AD, call for a foul away from the ball. Two minutes left. AD, the three from Kyrie. Kyrie, great look from LeBron James. Boys are moving the ball around. All right, 3-0. So end of the day here, it looks like Kyrie Irving could solve the Lakers problems as we're going. But finishing off with Jokic, the physical dominance that he has been displaying and his own demeanor of you are not going to stop me as I win this NBA championship, as I prove that I am worthy of being a MVP. As we close out seemingly this series, I mean, we will see. And I wanna hear your thoughts on what we should be doing on Course Light that you think would be cool. The whole point of this channel right now is to just throw things at the wall, see what sticks, see what is cool, see what's fun. So right now I'm enjoying some of these games but I spoiled this one myself. I try not to see. The Nuggets destroyed. So suddenly we're going back to Denver. Finishing up with my thoughts on this entire series, one Jamal Murray, all the shout out in the world to that guy, right? So looking at Jamal versus the Los Angeles Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. 32.5 points, 6.3 rebounds, 5.3 assists, and 2.8 steals per game. 
Shot 53% from the floor. I mean, probably you could say could have been a two-time all-star if he did not tear his ACL. And he said, load management. Sorry, but he did. He did. He said that. I spoiled again as we were jumping back. It is now three to two though. But here we go. Back to LA. Game six. My final thoughts on LeBron, if this is the closeout. I mean, at the end of the day, Jordan literally did leave and then came back. I'm in for that conspiracy right away that LeBron might take that one year retirement, then come back and choose where he wants to go. Are there any coaching vacancies open right now? at USC. I'm just wondering. We do have a close game here, but LeBron James has earned my respect so much at this point that I am very much rooting to see him get one last ride, to see him get one last chance at a real title. I mean, end of the day, this was just not an incredible Lakers roster. LeBron, AD, and the boys, they did their best. But I think if they do bring in a guy like a Kyrie Irving, I mean, that's like a Hollywood type of ending, to be honest, for LeBron James' career. Become boys and win it all. But as we see six minutes left, tie game, we might be going to seven games here if the Lakers cannot pull this out. We see 355 left, LeBron's dunking. Oh, it might be over. Jokic, four point game, nope. Very simply, end of the day here. The Lakers with Kyrie Irving, according to What If Sports, would take this series as we would watch in the deciding game six. Anthony Davis, 31 points, 14 rebounds, three assists, three steals, three blocks. LeBron with the 25. 10 and 9. End of the day, I'm all for LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. I want to see them reunite, and I don't think really Luka and Kyrie fit at all. Why would two ball dominant offense first players, why would that be who you're pairing with Luka? I don't get it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. We're on the grind to 10,000 subscribers. Cannot wait to get there. Thank you for being here from the beginning. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day. And cue that music.